Everyone has a different set of values with varying degrees of importance given to each value. But how do your values really impact you at work or in your business? Understanding that other people prioritize a different set of values that guide their behavior will help you to better understand really um, all of that whilst, um, you know, what influences their choices and perhaps also why it differs from yours. Um, Timothy Maurice Webster, in fact, is the author of four best-selling uh, books on human and brand behavior, and his research focuses on the link between brain power and brand influence. And this morning joins us virtually to share a little bit more about how your values and behavior really have an impact on you at your workplace. So on that note, Timothy, good morning, and thank you for your time with the SABC at this hour. Thank you. Good morning to you as well. Timothy, the power of our energy, how that influences, you know, really how we engage with people. Talk to us about that. So have you ever left someone with a bad taste in your mouth? Like, have you ever had a moment in your personal or professional life where someone crossed you in a particular way that did not align with your values? You know, a huge part of my work is understanding how things like values impact the brain. So if someone is late and your values are being on time, then they are serving you rotten values. If someone is really late, they deliver on time in the workplace, then they are serving you positive values, which has a nutritional value. So I want to be very clear. We eat each other's values. We digest values. Values have extraordinary nutritional power. I can't say this strong enough. One of the biggest challenges in the Rainbow Nation, you see it with these political parties, is that they have such fundamentally different values that it makes it a compelling case and an opportunity to serve each other something extraordinary. Now, Lisa, listen, this is very, very complex. And I know this as an American who's been working between over a decade in South Africa, that I've had to challenge myself to reduce my American ideas to assimilate. Mm. So for example, I can't see myself first. If I'm in this region of the world and my value in America is to project, to project and to show myself, I have to come in looking at the group through others first, through Ubuntu. If I want to serve people in a way where they taste me in a wonderful way. If you've ever been cheated on, then you know that it's kind of the same feeling as food poisoning. You just feel sick to your stomach. And that's how powerful values are, Lisa. Mm, yeah, Timothy, thank you for those opening remarks because looking at you know, the social, political constructs and what influences our values, perhaps even culturally, talk to us about you know, how that makes up um, some of our, our ideals, how negativity at work has an impact on your deliverable measures, but perhaps also in the same breath, positively, and how one could use that to your advantage. Yeah, so I want everybody to think about your recipe. Imagine that every single relationship you go into, every discourse, every complex conversation, the first thing I want you to do is one, I want, Ask yourself, I wonder what, because if you use this analogy around food, mm -hmm. and you ask yourself, what ingredients are making up my opponent, my colleague's value system? What ingredients? Is it an ounce of loyalty? Is it a spoon of being on time? Is it a dash or a pinch of team dynamics? Is it about alleviating poverty for some, but preserving wealth for others? You got to start thinking about the ingredients inside of the values that you're serving other people. And the reason why I like this analogy is because there is an extraordinary link between how the brain functions when you engage people through what we call chemical signaling to each other. This is real. This is not just an analogy. You physically do taste other people. Liesl, it's one of the reasons why we actually kiss. It's, you don't just kiss to connect with people. You kiss to detect the person's strength. You kick, you kiss to detect another person's genetic or the weakness in their DNA. Whenever you're engaging someone, positively or negatively, 
you're trying to find out what this person is working with. So when it comes to core values, think of it as ingredients. Mm-hmm. If you think about it, what the, one of the things that I love about South Africa is the seven colors. <laughs> like part of the reason why part of the reason why we sit down over Sunday lunch and we have seven colors. You don't have seven colors on Tuesday at lunch. No. But on Sunday you end the week with a well-rounded balanced look at what's going to be nutritional for me, but how can I connect over multiple ingredients at the end of the week? And so if you put all of these values down if you really sit down with your colleagues and you start looking at the ingredients, one of my favorite songs was Music Soul Child and Angie Stone. Mm. They ask about the ingredients of love. They're like, what, what is in your ingredients? And he says, Ooh, I need a, a pound of loyalty. You know? Yes. So every time you look at somebody, ask them, what are your ingredients for this task? What are the ingredients you bring? Because guess what? I want to make sure whoever I'm engaging with, they walk away feeling nutritionally empowered. I don't want to work with someone where I know when I walk in, they're going to conflict with my values in a way where I'm going to, I'm going to be poisoned by Mm -hmm. their lack of integrity. Mm -hmm. I'm going to be poisoned by the fact that the way they see this engagement is so self-centered that I get sick to my stomach and I can't even deliver on the fundamentals. Mm, no, you're, you're taking us to church this morning because I'm, I'm, I'm looking at, you know, uh, energy vampires as well. I mean, that also exists. So how does one safeguard against that, particularly in the workplace? But also, I mean, we're heading to the end of the year, right? People are suffering from yearn fatigue. That is real. How does one reimagine what's possible in this quarter uh, when, when rest is, is just, uh, you know, something that's top of mind? Let me just say, I'm going to be very controversial when I say this. This end of year fatigue thing, South Africa has so many holidays, guys. You know how many long weekends there are? (laughs) People people enjoying. Yes, people work hard. Yes, yes, I work hard. You work hard. We all work hard. Yes. But there's a concept in the brain called anticipatory regulation, which is you say to yourself, December is coming. I've got six weeks to go. And my holidays. So your brain has reduced its capacity just to get you through those six weeks. If you were to say to yourself, I've got a three month goal that's going to take me to February and you will apply particular energy to get you to February, then your brain will up its capacity to get you to February. So, so much of this stuff is mental. And I had to say that because You hear these narratives already. People in October, are you going away for the holiday? Are you going away? People already, the brain is already finished. And I want to say to you, when it comes to values, when it comes to us collaborating, when it comes to us saying to each other, I'm on a mission. The way you get more out of yourself, the way you can set the table to serve more in the careers of the people around you is that you're clear about the purpose of why you're serving. Mm. You can imagine, do you think Nelson Mandela, do you think Walter Sisulu, do you think all these extraordinary struggle icons were sitting around going, it's December when they were in prison <laughs> and we need to just sit around? No. That, those 20-some years when these people were in prison, these struggle icons were in yeah. prison, when the Beagle were fighting, when, when all these extraordinary people who laid the pathway for us were fighting, do you think they were sitting around worried about December holiday? No. They were thinking about something so much bigger that at the end of the day, that when the time frames came around, even on their birthdays, they were fighting. Yeah. And this is the philosophy I think we need. If you're going to dedicate yourself to a mission man, as we close the year, take your time off. Please do. I'm sure you've worked hard, guys. But at the end of the day, if your purpose is big yes. enough, you'll, you'll still want to serve values. If your purpose is big enough, you'll still want to serve your colleagues' nutrition. If your purpose is big enough, you'll still want to lay out a seven-course meal of excellence. Well, Timothy, uh, so many more questions coming off of the back of what you've echoed, but thank you for joining us this morning and uh, for sharing your insights. Um, of course, uh, we're going to have to leave that conversation there. The importance of values in the workplace, it lies in our beliefs, our attitudes and behaviours. I was just in conversation with Timothy Maurice Webster, author of best-selling books on human and brand behaviour.